Considering how important graphics are for games, seeing these realistic projects that are made with Unity is such an incredible inspiration source. Since you guys wanted me to continue this series, I decided that in this video we're going to take a look at another demo that is created by Oniros. I've also organized this video a little bit more compared to how the previous one was after your feedback. So let's go ahead and check it out. Hey guys, Sam here. So we're gonna dive deep into this demo and we're going to start off by analyzing this whole scene and see how it's made. I will also give my own opinions and share my thoughts under this process and then we'll continue with another Q&A session that I had with Oniros. And this time, I actually took your questions as inspiration from the previous video and your questions that you posted in Discord and asked them directly. And finally, we'll end the video off by having a whole tour of the house so you can see how every part looks since a lot of you guys suggest me to go upstairs in the previous video so I decided maybe we can just completely finish touring the house at the end. But now, let's go ahead and start this off. So, the first thing I realized as soon as I entered this demo is that the fabric and the cloth materials used on the furnitures and carpets are just as realistic as in the previous video. And by the way, if you haven't watched the previous video yet, I will have a link to that in the description and I strongly suggest you to watch it after watching this too. And the thing that makes these cloth materials look so realistic is the fact that they are not just plain and simple. You can see each little artifact and black dot in them as well as see a difference in the surface shading as if you would in in real life if you for example put your hand on this type of material and drag your hand across because it's gonna leave this dark spot behind and the same thing goes for the carpet under this stool right here you can see the shadows and the dark spots and it looks tessellated and not just flat also see the wooden material used on the floor in this demo it looks very realistic because of the same reasons as in cloth you can see each artifact dark spots and you can also see that it looks more tessellated than just being flat Wood like this in real life is not flat either because they all have these edges that go a little steep where the wood looks almost as if it's raised up and I do have them in my own apartment too which I'm gonna try showing you guys soon but it's basically like all over the place here so I'm like okay this looks realistic I can confirm. <laughs> I just gotta point out I also love the material they used on this white stool and I'm not only talking about the cloth in the middle which looks gorgeous but the wooden texture on the edges. The smoothness property of this material looks just perfect since it's not shiny but still it does receive quite a bit of light. We can also see how the texture is more advanced than what it looks considering the color changes in the texture. The table also looks just as good and the color of these furnitures in the middle of the room considering the color on the walls and the floor just match so good because they're all dark colors. I thought those reflected spheres on that plate right over there look so nice too. You can obviously tell that it's the actual room being reflected which is done by using a reflection probe mainly and I actually think I'll make a tutorial on reflection as a whole topic in Unity but let me know what you think about that in the comments. Post processing is always a huge part of these demos too and in this one specifically we can see how auto exposure really makes it look so much better than default. Like for example if I look down on the floor you can see it become more bright on my screen and if I look up at the ceiling we can see this obvious fade to less of an exposure. If we take a quick look at the other side of this room we can see a very nice table with some gold plated bowls on it. I think this golden bowl material that they created looks very realistic because it gives off the perfect reflection of the room and has a stained texture to it that interferes with the reflections. Speaking of stains, <laughs> let's also take a look at the windows because if you watch my previous video of this series, you'll know that I'm obsessed with stains on windows, which now that I think about it sounds super weird. Oh God. <laughs> I know you got stains on those windows in your home, okay? Don't lie to me. Oh, by the way, nice curtains. So looking out from the inside of the house, you can't really see any stains on the windows. However, switching the situation by walking outside you can see some frozen parts of the window and I thought the stains in the previous demo looked really nice and added an additional factor of realism into it so maybe something like that would have been cool and now I know I'm kind of going out of my way to add some last touches to this scene but I would like seeing some kind of snow on the floor here too like we're at the balcony and it's been snowing outside so maybe some prints of snow on the floor would have been great however even the ground close to the house if you would look outside a little bit doesn't really have any snow on it so I gotta give that to them. 
The lanterns look really good here though on the floor and I like that they have the frozen effect on the lanterns too which adds a little bit more realism into it. I also like the outside place that they have where you can just chill at the balcony and see birds flying, some snow on the ground and just endless lengths of mountains in the background. Something else that really sticks out to me personally is this glass material on the table right here. I think these look super realistic because of the reflections but also the transparent shader itself. You can clearly tell the table's artifacts and the texture in the background even while looking through the glass. And one more thing I realized here pretty late actually is that fire particle inside that heater. Like look at that, it looks so nice. Also take a look at this fine job of modifying the material of the fabric and cloth of this bed and the rug on it. Like it looks incredible and so does the cushions on the bed too. Returning to the post-processing real quick, I want to talk a little bit about the lamps in the scene and just light in general before continuing with the Q&A. What I love is that they make lamps and lights seem so subtle by not adding extreme amounts of bloom. And this is something that a lot of indie developers do, which I talked briefly about before too, because they think, oh, let's just add more post-processing, that will make my scenes look more beautiful, but it's like... And not really, you know what I mean? Like, instead of overdoing Bloom, go ahead and add realistic textures to your models like they've done with this lamp in the corridor, for example, and let the light itself shine a little bit, but not too much. Oh, and by the way, like, where are we? Where are we in this scenario? What am I, a vampire? So that is pretty much all I wanted to dissect of this house. And now we're gonna do the Q&A and then continue by taking a, just a quick look at the house itself by touring. But let's start with the Q&A. So, I've asked them questions through Facebook and they've replied. So I'm basically going to read my questions and then their replies and have all the text on screen so you can follow up. So let's begin. First question was, for people who are not familiar with you guys, how would you introduce yourselves? And they said, we are a startup company based in Milan and our focus is to create realistic environments, assets and real-time experiences for businesses and companies. And then the second question was, how do you come up with these architectural designs for these houses? And they said, part of our team comes from the architecture and design field and this is considered fundamental for the understanding of the spaces, the volumes and the lights in our projects. We take inspiration from many real projects that we then modify according to our needs. And the third question was actually from Blank Duman from our Discord server who said, can these things be achieved in games? And they replied by, yes, of course, there are a lot of AAA games with amazing graphics. On the other side, you need a lot of people, time and high budget to achieve realistic graphics in games. I feel like this really depends on the experience of the person who works on the project because if you're solo, it doesn't mean that you can't achieve these realistic graphics because the engine limits you, you know what I mean? Like it really depends on your experience, but I agree with them because it is going to take more time. And then the fourth question was asked by Luke, who is an admin in our Discord server. Probably a lot of you guys will know him. And he asked, do you use baked or real-time lighting? And Oniros replied by, where it is possible, we prefer to work with baked lights and only the structure of the baked lighting is made. We look after to integrate the real-time ones too. And then Lolster Man from our Discord server asked, the question what's the most time consuming part of your project and they said could sound weird but the concept of the project requires a lot more time that being said the 3d modeling of the furniture is the step that takes most time and then pursues the hand from our discord server continued with what software do you use to do modeling and they said we use 3ds max but it is possible to achieve the same things also using other 3D software like Blender, they just need to work with meshes. And the Mad Machine from Discord asked, what are the biggest challenges for making these demos VR compatible? And they said, the optimization of the whole scene is fundamental to make, the, make a good job in VR. If your frame rate is too low, taking as reference 90 FPS, it's not important how cool your demo or game looks because people would not try your project again and they would get bored after just five seconds. So the bigger challenge is to keep the experience photorealistic while keeping a higher frame rate. And then Toriole asked, do you have any tips for people who want to use photogrammetry more efficiently? And they said to be careful of the amount of polygons 
because it risks to kill your frame rate. You should also evaluate carefully if photogrammetry is the best way to produce an asset because sometimes it could be faster and could allow you to keep a better control on the result using a traditional 3D modeling software so like Blender and 3ds Max that they're using. And then I continued by asking what do you use for collaborating with your team and they said as a company we decided to work mainly in remote and to do this we found a tech and artist part of Unity Collaborate that allows different users to work on the same project. We think it's fundamental for our workflow. And by the way, if you guys want to check out more about Unity Collaboration, which is a service that Unity offers, I'll be leaving a link to it in the description box of this video. And then finally, I ask, do you have any suggestions on general optimization for these realistic demos? And they reply by saying, optimize your geometry, keep the draw cost number low, use baked lighting as much as possible, and keep the real-time lights to a minimum. So that is all I wanted to talk about in this video and this should give you an overview of how to create such demos and implement these graphics into your games. As you can see, creating realistic scenes in Unity isn't really as hard as you might think of it is. So I say give it a shot. Take these demos created by Oniros as inspiration and try it yourself. And obviously if you need any help, if you have any questions, if you get stuck, whatever it might be, you can always ask your questions to us because we're a friendly community towards beginners and also experienced developers. So it doesn't really matter if you started yesterday or 10 years ago in the industry. So you're just welcome. And speaking of which, I would also like to give a huge shout out to Oniros for collaborating on this series of videos so far. They've been super helpful by providing me with these demos and also by answering our community's questions. I'm actually going to link their asset store page and social media in the description box So definitely go ahead and check them out and give them a thanks And by the way, just like I said before if you want to join our community and become a part of in-depth Discussions and get chance to ask your questions for Q&A's in videos like this Join our discord server, which is linked in the description too. By the way, we're more than 7,000 people in the server who are all like-minded and love the things you love to do. If you enjoyed these videos and want to see more, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to stay up to tune. Also, turn on that bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload something new. And if you feel like you enjoy your time watching my videos and this, this content in general, consider supporting me via Patreon, which allows you to donate to me monthly so I can keep making videos and improve technically. So that's all. I Now I'm gonna stop talking. I know you guys have been waiting for this. <laughs> and I'm just gonna start walking around the house so we can tour it. Before doing so though, I just wanna give a huge shout out to Richard Stans, Cupola, and all of our other Patreon support us you guys rock now with that being said i will see you in the comment section so enjoy your time and thanks for watching